Hey fam, welcome back to I Love Me Me Me. So today I want to talk about the the things that men and women do to self-medicate themselves after they've gone through a divorce or horrible breakup. Stay tuned. All right, fam, thanks so much for coming back. So let's, the things I'm going to discuss today are all of the things that, that can be detrimental to you and your upcoming relationships if you don't get these things under wraps. When we go through a breakup or divorce, we are all hurt, uh, been there, done that, breakup and divorce. Um, so I totally get the downside, the somewhat depression, the what was me, the why did this happen to me, the um, oh my God, what's going to occur now? I got the kids, I got the house, or you know, you, you guys' life was intertwined. What am I going to do now? Feelings. Like I understand all of those feelings and I want to discuss some of the things that I know people um, gravitate towards. So the very first thing that can be very detrimental to you and your upcoming relationships and not just your spousal or partner relationships. This can be your, any of your familial relationships, whether it's your kids, whether it's your, um, um, siblings or parents, your coworkers, like all of your relationships will absolutely be affected once you start going down the path of doing these things. So the very first thing is they decide to pick up a bottle. They decide to over drink. And this is their form of numbing themselves. Actually, all of these things, you're numbing yourself from dealing with what actually happened, from facing your own music from looking in the mirror at yourself and understanding that you too play a part in why that relationship did not work out. So all of these things are self-medicating, they're numbing, they're trying to keep you away from the pain, not realizing that once you come back up, as in being sober, the issue is still there because you have not dealt with in this case, your baggage. Your baggage is whatever it is on why your divorce or relationship did not work out. You are partially the cause, sis. You are partially the cause, bruh. Relationships don't just not work out. They don't work out for several reasons, but that's a different video. The next thing that people do, all age levels. Like all of these things are all age levels as well. I forgot to mention that. But the, the next thing that people do is we really start becoming very promiscuous, the meaningless sex. And sometimes we even go toward meaningless, unprotected sex because you're like, whatever, I don't care. I don't care. I'm just going to do what I want to do. I don't care. Uh, this don't matter right now, or, you know, nothing's going to happen to me, whether it's a disease that you can cure or not, or a child. This meaningless, unprotected sex, sex, you don't know who you're truly dealing with. And then you have to deal with this person or this thing for a lifetime, at least potentially. If you didn't catch anything or if you didn't reproduce, procreate, then who knows? But most of the time, this is where we get ourselves in these situations where the baby mama happens or the baby daddy happens. And because you didn't know them and then you have to deal with them all of these years, you're like, oh, my God, what did I get myself into? And then you're wondering about all of the child support or the, the parent, in most cases, the woman, how she's using the child against you. You want to, you actually want to be a part of your child's life, but that woman won't let you be a part of the child's life because she pissed off that you won't try to make it work with her or whatever her issues are. Bruh, you played a part in that. Sis, you played a part in that. We got to start taking responsibility for our actions, not just out there willy nilly doing things. 
We have to go and sit down and speak to people so we can get this off of our chest. I'm not saying you have to find somebody to always have to pay. Find a trusted friend. Talk to your pastor. Talk to your priest. Talk to the imam, whoever it is that you need to talk to. Get this stuff up off of you so you're not walking around just numbing yourself, doing all of these dangerous things, putting yourself in these dangerous situations. The next thing that some people do, they actually throw themselves into some form of drug, whether it's marijuana, crack, cocaine, anything that you can think of, meth. Are they still doing speed? I don't know. Whatever whatever it is that is your drug of choice. If you were already doing drugs, now you're starting to go hard in the pain with them. All right. Thanks so much for understanding my baby. I need to get her under control. Okay. Yes. Mommy problems. <laughs> Moving on. The fourth thing that some people do is they actually go through a really, really, really depressive state. I'm not talking about staying in the bed for like a day or two. I'm talking about they go weeks and weeks and weeks of not getting out the bed. They don't know what they want to do with their life any longer because they were so entangled with this person or they feel like they actually want to cause bodily harm to themselves, start cutting themselves, whatever, maybe even trying to commit suicide. They go through a really depressive state. And a lot of this is because... You have yet to humble yourself and actually go and speak to somebody, honestly. And then the second thing that I will say, which really should have been the first thing, is because a lot of us are, we're depending on ourselves to kind of get things together and clarify things. And we're not leaning on God any longer. So this is where I'm going with this. We're not leaning on God. We're not laying this burden down at the altar per se, and just ridding yourself of all of this weight. You're still carrying it around, which is why you're having such a hard time of accepting that now this relationship is over and also dealing with the day in and day out of not seeing this person, not being around this person. And so we start to get in this super depressive state. Some people even go as far as losing their job or they actually will get up and be a functional person who is in a depressive state. They'll go to work, do what they need to do. As soon as they get off, they're absolutely in the bed, under the covers, waiting for the next day to do it all over again. And especially around the holidays, this is something that a lot of people go through um, because we're missing that peace, that person that was always there. Whether it was healthy or not, it doesn't matter. We're still feeling like we are missing something and that something is that person because you're no longer having that connection with them. And so you're like, why am I here? What is this all about? It doesn't matter anymore. So you're going through all of this depression and you're keeping all of this bottled up inside. You're not speaking to anybody and just or you're also not letting people actually be there for you. It's people that's calling you, people that's texting you, just people that's checking up on you like like you're really your real friends and your real family and meaning the family that you're that you stay in contact with all the time. Right. They know what's actually going on. They're trying to figure out they're trying to help you out, but you're not even letting them be in your presence because you feel like I'm going through all this by myself. I'm going through, I'm alone in this thing. And most of the time when you feel like you are alone, you're not alone. It's just, you're not willing to open up and let anybody into your world and let them see this vulnerable person for you to be like super vulnerable and like, for you to let down your hair and just if you need to freaking let them be there for you and you just cry the entire time. Most of us aren't willing to be that vulnerable. Let somebody just come over and seriously be that shoulder. Like seriously, they are the shoulder and you are seriously crying on it. Most of us aren't willing to open up to that level. And until we are able to open up and let somebody be a part of our world and see our snot, see our crying, see our uh, just just down and out state. You won't be able to 
claw your way out of that. You won't. And so even if you're giving it to God, it's all good. You can go into your prayer closet and get all of this out and be good. But most people keep it bottled up inside of them, which is where the depression is coming from. Because it's just nothing but weight on you. Have you ever noticed that when you yourself let something off your chest, it doesn't even have to be something that's like super, super heavy, but you might have did something and you're like, okay, I, I need to talk about this. I need to tell this person. I need to just get this out. And once you get this thing out, you're like, you're like, dang, yeah, I can sit up a little bit more. Yeah, I'm good now. Thanks. Now, the other person might not be feeling like that, but you who got it out, you're like, okay. Yeah, thanks for that. I'm good. Yeah. All right, you want to go eat a drink? <laughs> they might not be feeling that way, but I'm just saying, right? So um, find a way to get these things off of your chest. Seriously, you're going to feel so much better. The last thing that people do, or at least some people do, when they have gone through a divorce or a horrible breakup, they shy away from relationships altogether because they're like, you know what? Been there, done that, didn't work out. Everybody is grouped into this one setting. Everybody that they're interested in, um, um, everybody that they're interested in, meaning the opposite sex. So all of those men are dogs or all of those women are gold diggers. They don't want nothing. They did me dirty. And, and, and usually we can't, we, we always, we love to say all or be inclusive about everybody. But let's be real. You ain't date everybody. You wasn't married to everybody. So you can't say everybody. Because you just really don't have that research to put it out there like that. Okay? Let's stop saying all. Oh, let's stop being inclusive with everybody in that sense. Because it's just not true. So we shy away from any type of relationship because I'm not about to get God no more. Been there, done that. And then when we do decide that we're going to get into these meaningless relationships we don't really let them in and let them be a part of our world because we're holding back and as soon as we see somebody trying to be attached to us out the door never to be seen again this is where that term ghosted comes in yes you've been ghost you as the person who's been ghost, you don't realize that's what's happening until it's like okay now i figured out okay i'm, I'm never gonna see this person okay Okay, uh, uh, okay, but the person doing it, you know what's happening. You were starting to let down your guard a little too much. You were starting to get attached to this person, and you didn't want to go there. I actually dated a guy like that. He was, he was um, getting over some of his emotional things, and he wasn't quite there yet, but I didn't realize that he wasn't there quite there yet until we started talking more, hanging out more, right? But then he would say different things, and then I'm, you know, I'm paying attention more, and I'm like, okay, okay, brother, fine, but this ain't gonna work out. I know it's not. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, I hung around him a few more times because he was fine. Um, <laughs> that's just being all the way real, but um, I knew that it wasn't gonna work out, and when he ghosted me, I already knew it was coming out for me personally, at least in that instance, because I knew what was starting to unfold because of some of the things that he was saying. I was just like, I'm, I'm just going to run. I'm just going to let things run its course. And when he disappears, then he disappears. And he did. And so, um, yeah, so that was it. I knew that it was coming. I wasn't shocked when I never heard back from him. And life moves on okay but um yeah so they shy away from the relationship he was just actually like nah um my ex did x y and z and he was dealing with baby mama drama and they weren't even living in the same state like he was going through some things he was trying to get it all figured out he had mentioned how he didn't want to get married um right away or if ever so again i already knew that wasn't gonna work for me but again brother was fine and to be quite honest, nobody else was there, okay? I wasn't dating multiple people because that's just who I am. I usually don't anyway, but different video. He was fine. I stayed around. I knew that it wasn't going to work out, and so I just let it run its course. And that's it, boo. So these are the five things that I found that when you're going through a horrible divorce or horrible breakup, most people tend to do. So you've already heard my spiel. 
but absolutely find somebody that you can talk to. I don't care if you find them for free, if they are a good listening ear. If you want to work with me in particular to help you through these things, absolutely email me and we can converse about the details of working together. I will absolutely love that because again, if I can help you not to go through some of the things that I personally went through, then I have done my job. If you did go through a divorce and you no longer want to go through a divorce and I have helped you, I have done my job. If you never have to experience a divorce because you come to this channel and you're getting the information that you need and you are applying it to your life, I have done my job. Thank you guys so much for listening. Of course, give me a thumbs up if you like this video. Share it with the people who you know who need to see it. If you're not following me on my social media, those links are down in the description box below. Go ahead and follow me on my social media. I would love that. I put different content up there I'm pretty regularly. Uh, this week, I've actually been slacking on it, but um, pretty regularly, I put up different content. And so you can just go ahead and join in that conversation and we can do some engagement outside of YouTube. Okay. Love you guys. There's nothing you can do about that. And of course, of course, subscribe if this is your very first time here. This is the type of content that I love to share with you guys because here at I Love Me Me Me, I am sharing all of the tips and tools in order to have happy, healthy, romantic relationships so we together collectively can start to decrease that divorce rate while simultaneously increasing the marriage rate. I love you. Deuces.